allowed by law to do any business in Mauritius, and yet it is treated as an Indian, as a Mauritius company and a resident of Mauritius by the Indian tax authorities. In fact, in 2001, one interpret tax officer of income tax officer of Bombay, he said that look. I refuse to treat you as a resident of Mauritius because you are not allowed by law to do any business in Mauritius. You have nothing in Mauritius. Your ownership, your place of management is in America or Europe. Your business is all in India and therefore how can you be treated as a resident, a resident of Mauritius merely because you are registered in Mauritius as a foreign company. And therefore, I will lift your corporate veil and he said, I will not give you the benefit of the Indo-Mauritius Double Taxation Treaty because the Indo-Mauritius Double Taxation Treaty has a special characteristic which is not there in any other double taxation treaty in the world which says all double taxation treaties that India has with all other countries say that capital gains will be taxed in the country where they accrue. Only the Mauritius Treaty says even capital gains will be taxed in the country where you reside. The result was that all foreign companies who were doing business, who were speculating on the stock market in India, making gains of thousands of crores, were getting away without paying any tax by calling themselves residents of Mauritius. And therefore this income tax officer said that I will lift your corporate wage I will see which is your place of residence according to international law and he said according to international law you, a company resides at the place from where it is managed. Since you are managed from USA or Europe, I will treat you to be a resident of USA or Europe and therefore apply the Indo-US or the Indo-European double taxation treaty according to which capital gains are taxed where they accrue. All your capital gains are accruing, thousands of crores are accruing in India, therefore you will be taxed here. What did the Indian government do? Mr. Yashwan Sinha, the illustrious finance minister of the NDA time, whose daughter was running the largest such fund called the India Fund, whose daughter-in-law was running the largest such fund, who, which was speculating in the Indian uh, uh, stock market in the same way through Mauritius, he got, he said, in the very next day he said, don't worry, I will get this reversed. Told all these FIIs who were doing this business in India. Within three days he got the central board of direct taxes to pass, uh, to issue a circular which said that no tax officer in India is to tax any company which gets a residence certificate from Mauritius. As a result of which, Till today, all FIIs coming, virtually all FIIs coming, uh, uh, FDIs coming into India are coming through Mauritius, are being routed through Mauritius and none of them is paying any tax in India. Not only companies coming from abroad, even Indian companies are now resorting to this subterfuge of registering a subsidiary or something in Mauritius and doing business in India through those companies. I mean, this kind of, and now, <coughs> how is this black money or this money abroad generated? One way, of course, is what uh, Mr. Tulsi told you, crime money, that is money uh, obtained through drug trafficking, money obtained through bribery, of course, that money, most of it first goes abroad, then is laundered by way of participatory notes, I believe that most of these people, most of these ministers, etc., who have, who have undoubtedly got thousands or tens of thousands of crores by way of bribes abroad, have laundered that money through participatory notes and that money is now invested in the stock market in India through this device of participatory notes, with which Mr. Pranam Mukherjee says, is not only going to be encouraged, it will not be taxed in India. Because it is their money. Obviously, they don't want it to be taxed. I mean, these very people own this money which is being laundered and brought back into India through participatory notes. But this 
Crime money is still a small part of the money which has gone abroad and been rooted through tax havens. I believe that the bulk of the money which has been rooted through tax havens, and of course most of it I believe has been brought back into India through participatory notes and such other opaque devices, anonymous devices, is money which has been siphoned out from the coffers of large corporations in India like Reliance. I'll give you a couple of examples. In the uh, gas field that uh, this Godavari gas basin, Reliance has a contract with the government of India. It's called a production sharing contract under which the profit that that company makes is supposed to be shared between that company and the government of India and the percentage of the share of profit which will come to the government of India depends on the multiple of the profit that is if the profit is more than twice the cost of production then the lion's share of the profit will come to the government of India under that production sharing contract. Otherwise, the lion's share of the profit goes to Reliance. Now, in order to show that their profits are never going to be more than twice, in order to ensure that their profits shown will not be more than twice their operating costs, what they do, and that has been found, that they purchase, for example, if they have to purchase an oil rig, which costs one billion dollars, sorry, which costs hundred million dollars in the market, they will set up a subsidiary in Mauritius, appoint that as their agent, and root and ask the agent to purchase that oil rig, which that agent will purchase for one billion dollars. Instead of a hundred million, which is the market price, they over invoice it by nine hundred percent purchase it for $1 billion and thereby inflate their costs so that their multiple of profits divided by operating costs will never exceed the multiple of 2 or 2.5, whatever it is. Now, what happens? $1 billion goes to this subsidiary which has been really siphoned out from this Reliance company. You have, of course, cheated the government in the first place because the government which would have got the lion's share of your profits is being deprived of its share. In the second place, you have cheated the shareholders for the lion's is owned 50% by the Ambani brothers and 50% by the general public. You have cheated those 50% of the general public because you have siphoned out money from this reliance company and that money goes to a company owned by the Ambani brothers or some of their nominees which is registered in a tax haven or Mauritius. This, I believe, is the bulk of the money which has gone abroad. And as I said, most of the money, most of this money has been uh, laundered and brought back into this country through the, these non-transparent devices because firstly the money goes to a tax haven where it's Ownership is lost as to who owns these, these companies, you can never come to know. Of course, if the government of India was serious about getting to the bottom of these companies, finding out who are the real owners of these companies, what are their accounts, etc., all that they needed to do under the UN Convention for, Against Corruption, all provision has been made to ensure that there will be international cooperation by all the, these other countries like Mauritius, etc. If India were serious about getting, first tracking this money, who owns this money, and then getting it back, that is seizing it. What they need to do is to pass two kinds of, or one law which says two things. First, that all Indians will have to declare, are obliged to declare any accounts held abroad by them or uh, their shareholding in any company. 
which is registered abroad that they have any connection with any company held abroad. Number two, any account or any company which is not declared by them will be confiscated and its entire assets would be seized by the Indian government. These two provisions would be sufficient then to trigger a law containing these two provisions would be sufficient to trigger the provisions under the UN Convention Against Corruption for international cooperation with these countries like Mauritius, etc. Then what you do is, you ask these countries, Mauritius and these other tax haven countries, that look, you are obliged under the UN Convention Against Corruption to cooperate with us. We have a law which says that no Indian can have any accounts or any companies which they have not declared here. We want you to disclose to us all the accounts and the ownership of all the companies which are registered in your company or all the accounts kept in your country. And they would be obliged to disclose all that. And as soon as you come to know the problem that is coming today is Mr. Tulsi informed us about various provisions that the various measures that the Indian government has taken. But all those measures become useless unless you get to the bottom of who owns these companies and who owns the funds owns owned by these companies which are registered abroad. And for that you need to pass this kind of law. In the absence of that you are just making a show as if you are trying to track this money down, you are trying to get hold of all this but in effect in fact, you are doing nothing. And this is what has in fact been happening. So therefore, uh, as I said, Indian government, Mr. Jait Malani is quite right that this government is far from being serious about tracking all this illegal money, this uh, bribe money or this illegally siphoned out money from these corporations. Government of India is in fact encouraging all this by persisting with this fraudulent double taxation treaty with Mauritius, which has, as I said, become a tax haven, and by encouraging all this, by encouraging non-transparent devices which allow huge investors who are investing lakhs of crores in this country, participatory notes in this country are worth lakhs of crores. To remain anonymous, in fact, if if they were obliged, if, why should these non-transparent anonymous instruments, financial instruments be allowed at all? People say that, look, privacy will be. What is this privacy? When we have such a huge problem of corruption in this country, such a huge problem of black money in this country, privacy is of no consequence. In fact, every Indian must be obliged to disclose publicly disclose every detail of every asset and every account owned by him. In fact, that the government of India should bring a law that every Indian will be obliged to disclose all his assets and all the accounts held by him in India or abroad and all membership of any uh, company owned by him. Instead of doing that, we are just trying to make a show and beating around the bush. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Mr. Prasad Bhushan, and I will give thanks to all of the speakers and very respected chairperson, Mr. Anil Jivan and our senior advocate, Jeff Maliji, and Kathy Stutsi. And because the time is very short, so only for 15 minutes break, thereafter again the third seminar will start. Shat session. Thank you. This session is now at an end. I am sorry, the next session will be delayed a bit, because I think I will not have a tea break. Uh, we will have a tea break yes. right now, but a real short one. Please uh, try to hurry up and be back for the next session. And question answers will come back.